Well, 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 you have finally got here. You are listening to the Erskine Music Podcast. Here by popular demand, we discuss life, culture, Christ, and of course, music. These half-hour broadcasts are perfect for a commute, coffee time, chat, or any other gap in your schedule where you want to put great content. So without further ado, let's join the conversation today, already in progress. Look, guys, I thought, <laughs> thought about this for a long time. How do I make the intersection between this wonderful young lady that's about to come on this show? And I'm going to give you guys a quick warning here in just a second. But this wonderful young lady that's about to come on the show, Lydia Plath, who is part of the TLC series, Welcome to Plathville. She is our independent music artist herself. And we're going to highlight some of her music today. But I just want to tell you guys this. For all the trolls that are out there, you guys better be nice today. Dude. You guys better be nice today to this young lady. Or we're going to have some words. At any rate... Uh, this young lady who's coming on the show is an accomplished musician in her own right, has grown up in a family, uh, not unlike the those that are going to Little House on the Prairie. You see what I did there? Not unlike the Little House on the Prairie, but she's grown up in a family that majored in playing gospel music. And if you guys watch the series, Welcome to Plathville, you guys know that they're in season eight, I believe, season eight, season nine of that. And so she's going to come on uh, and just kind of share her thing. We got associated with one another through some of our musical contacts. And we'll talk a little bit about that on the show today. But I just want you guys to come on today and listen to this young lady's heart, her love for Jesus, and obviously, the Arctic music shop. <laughs> My love for Jesus as well. But, but let's go. Let's get Little House on the Prairie off the screen here, and let's get to work today. Y'all are acting like intro stuff all throughout the day. Let's get it! <laughs> I don't even know what it is that I'm doing. Like, it's like I've never <laughs> done this before. Lydia Plath, and um, we're talking about today this music, your faith, more. You know, we got a chance to know one another, meet one another, because you came and you were a part of the Christian Songwriters and Musicians International um, group that had met mm -hmm. i think i've been at several meetings with you one in gatlinburg and then one also in franklin mm -hmm. and uh just seeing you grow in your music and, and hearing a little bit about your testimony your love for jesus i wanted to have you come on the show the last time we talked about this i wanted to have you come on the show because i want people to connect the dots between maybe some of the things that they've seen with you on television and where it is that you desire to go as a songwriter as an artist as someone who wants to proclaim your love for jesus through music and provide a platform for you to be able to do that. So I want to ask you uh, about, you know, kind of from that springboard, what is it like for the people describe maybe what it's like growing up with cameras in your face all the time and being a part of a reality TV show, especially as you're growing and developing and sort of coming into your own. What has that experience yeah. been like? Well, it's definitely not anything that I would have envisioned in a million years. And it it's taken a lot of adjusting. Um, but really for me, it's been it's been a time to make sure that just have a heart check and that whether the cameras are rolling or whether I'm at the dinner table with my two younger sisters, that my heart is in the right place and yeah. that my words and actions are are from him and, and him through me, you know, whether the cameras are rolling or not. Sure. Um, but it has been just like from, from a practical level, the adjusting to it. Um, I mm -hmm. was four, I was 15 first time I walked down the stairs to go make breakfast and the house was full. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Cameras and crew and everything everywhere. Um, and I just like, I looked around and I was like, oh my goodness, this is what we're dealing with. And this is what, today. <laughs> this is, this is what we're the day is going to look like. Okay. So 
well, I just, I just walked right through everyone and I found the path and I went to the kitchen and I started making pancakes. And I was just like, I'm going to do my thing. I don't know what they're doing, but I'm going to do my thing. Hang, so hang, that's kind of how it hang, got started. Yeah. Hang, hang, hang on a second. I, I, I want to tease this out for just a second. So literally oh, no. there was no conversation with you about, Hey, <laughs> by the way, Lydia, there's going to be some folks with the camera tomorrow. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Uh, they're just, you know, getting some B-roll, doing some different things, some interviews. Just wanted to prep you for it. There was none of that conversation that took place. You literally just got up and you were like, huh, sounds noisy downstairs. What's going on? Well, that certainly gives a sense of why people enjoy this show. Very engaging, very heartfelt. We will return to the conversation in a few moments. But first, let's thank our sponsors and you for all your awesome support. Moody Radio's Dawn and Steve Morning Show. Life Action Ministries. Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and Holt International. Thanks so much to our partners who make such a difference. Thanks, Jason. This is Don. And this is Steve of Don and Steve in the Morning on Moody Radio. You can find us online at donandsteve.org, or you can listen through the Moody Radio app. And as friends of the Erskine Music Show, we always enjoy the variety of topics our friend has on his show. So on behalf of our show, thanks, Erskine for bringing great Christ-centered topics to the people. All right, let's get back to the show. This is where it gets good. And you're walking around and like people are setting up things and they got the jib and everything. And you're like, I don't know any of these people. Was that, is that literally <laughs> how that happened? Halfway. I, about three of the people had come out previously just to meet us and say hi. But then when the 15 other people arrived, then it's just like, those people that you once knew, their faces are lost. And yeah, that's that's a pretty well description of it, sort of kind okay. of. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, set the record straight here today. You know, there's this saying, you know, pressure will bless a pipe. And uh, mm -hmm. it is just this whole idea that, you know, you living sort of in a fishbowl and having to be on, so to speak, all the time, that can be a really draining experience um, for anybody. Because mm -hmm. if they did a reality TV show of my life, there's certain hours where I'm on and it's good on and certain hours where I'm off. <laughs> it's, it is just not, it is not happening well. And so um, definitely you navigating that. I thought TLC did a good job. I'll show about three minutes of this if you don't mind. Um, okay. I, I haven't seen it. this in like six years. So it's gonna be yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is kind of my, my introduction to, to things. And for folks that are watching the show, if they've never seen it before, I don't know who doesn't know you. I feel like everybody knows you, but for those that maybe haven't seen or, or know very much about you, this is a good three minutes. I'll speed it up just because it kind of gets to the part where you're talking about your love for music. And then we're going to jettison into a conversation about your music. But this is TLC and uh, their coverage uh, of you. Music has pretty much always been a part of my life. We all grew up playing music together separately, you know, learning basics of music, um, music theory. There's Lydia. I played a little banjo now and then, a little mandolin. It was just a part of our schooling, part of our lives. And then somehow or another, we ended up as a band practicing and then performing. And somehow it led us all over the place, mostly to churches and events. Uh, it took us pretty much all over the eastern half of the United States, which was really fun. We did mostly Southern gospel because that was the only good kind of music in my parents' opinion. <laughs> I love music, but I never- Hey, I'm gonna put some respect on some Southern gospel music. I did the yeah. Christmas special for the last couple of years with the Gaithers, and mm -hmm. that's a really fun experience. They're phenomenal musicians, and. I've had an opportunity to interview Ernie Haas um, on Moody Radio, and uh, I, I got some respect for Southern gospel music. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this actual performance in this church? I do. I remember that very vividly. I know exactly what the whole church looked like, the um, fellowship hall where we had our table set up, where we stayed that night, the eight-hour drive, everything. Yeah, I remember that church all right. You don't have to say the name of the church or where the church is at, but what are some experiences that kind of you, everything that we post on like social media and those kind of things is the camera seeing us with a certain vantage point, but it doesn't mm -hmm. see the stuff that's behind the scenes. It doesn't see the moments before you came out and this was actually filmed. Mm -hmm. um, so what's some of those things that the camera has not ca caught 
that are memories that you have in your mind where you go, yeah, well, 15 seconds before all of that happened, <laughs> that people see, <laughs> there was this that, that happened. Uh -huh. Well, I think, it would, remember? I think it would be accurate to say that right before we were going to go up on stage, um, the whole family was there except for Ethan. And okay. that happened That happened often, whereas, like, the pastor started to introduce us, and we're still like, um, <laughs> where's Ethan? We need him. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I think that happened there. And also, um, I, rem I remember that church was the one and only time that Micah accidentally stepped forward and hit the track pedal. So we were in the middle of a song, <laughs> And he actually stepped on the track pedal, and so it skipped to the next song. Okay. So, <laughs> I think right, that's the only time that happened, but that happened at that church. I remember that. Ready or not, <laughs> here we go. I really oh, had goodness. a huge passion for that kind of music. I like being able to see yeah, what she I'm missing. Now, were you actually watching that video on the iPad, or did they just hand it to you? Yeah, I was watching the, the old clips. Okay. And Goodness, some of this I haven't seen in so long. It's I didn't crazy. Know, I didn't know if they staged that and they were like, here, we're going to have you hold this iPad and make it look like you're watching it. We, <laughs> no, no. I, my reactions would be so fake if I was trying. Okay. I'm only going to do a couple minutes of this. Because I want to get to your music part of it your music part of seeing, it. Yeah, seeing those clips of my whole family out there singing mm, just makes my heart happy. It does. This concert, it'll be one of the last times we're all going to be together. Ethan got married and Hosanna is moving away, so it's harder for us to get together and practice. So we decided not to book any more concerts. I know there were times um, near the end of us traveling that some of my siblings weren't too happy with it. <laughs> I guess they kind of want to do a different style. And that did hurt, you know, just knowing that they weren't truly really happy doing this, but that didn't prevent me from I'll enjoying the interview about moments. what you got going on. And then on. right in the middle of things is Lydia. <laughs> she is now 15. Lydia. Lydia, she's got a sweet spirit. <laughs> uh, her middle name is Joy. She exemplifies that a lot in the household. I'm blessed by that. And she has those great harmonies. So make her welcome. Come on, Lydia. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. And pretty much the entire time that we, I traveled with my family, I sang backup harmonies. I enjoyed it. I loved it so much. And now you look like you were coming out late on that one. Were you coming from somewhere else? <laughs> no, no, I was, Mariah sang the first line, I sang the second, Hosanna sang the third. But yeah, I was standing way back there, and then I was like, oh, it's my line. <laughs> back up. Oh, you better get up there. I enjoy it, I love it so much. <laughs> and now, I'm on my own journey. You don't have time to get ready when it's time to be ready. Yep. I never had the nerve to speak. And so for me, I didn't, when I first met you, I didn't know about any of the stuff in your family. I didn't mm -hmm. know about any, any reality TV show. I didn't know the, any of the other characters. I just met you. And this pretty much was the scene um, that I met you. You were carrying your guitar. Oh, I'm on my own room, journey. And I'm like, okay, I guess she's, yeah, she's going to do a I song. I never had the nerve to speak <laughs> on stage. So I was not going to go try to pursue something on my own. I literally, one night was just like, you know. That's the guitar that you used at CSMI, isn't it? Yep, that's the guitar. Father, I right. really do actually miss Shine my few music just like I did back in the day with my family. But we'll just say that fear of being on stage by myself and speaking and singing. Was that at CSMI? Yes, <laughs> that was. I was going to say, I recognize that background there. Uh huh. But that's great. <laughs> yep. That's great. I think I think I was actually there when you were singing that. And so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and jump out of that interview. And back okay, into one, our interview. one question real quick. Where did you get sure. that footage from? Was that from season five or four or was it a side clip well me and tlc have a contract and so i'm not able to tell you where it is that i get information from <laughs> just, just <laughs> no it's funny just because i haven't i actually honestly haven't watched the last much of the last few seasons so but i kind of like that clip i don't know anyways moving well on. no that that cool. clip is actually for anybody who wants to go back and reconstruct any of my shows i put the show notes in the link for the show and so that I found that on YouTube. And uh, mm. yeah, you can just go back and you can cool. find that easily. Easily. Sweet. I want to also <laughs> talk to you specifically about your music. And the reason why the reason why I want you to just have a platform where you can share this is because your music has been the gateway to being able to share your love for Jesus. And I wanted you to share that in reference to how your love for Jesus, how music, background, all those different things 
has helped you be able to share more effectively to a broader audience and kind of what that experience has been like for you. And so I'll, I'll open the floor mm -hmm. up for that because that's, that's why you're here. Yeah. So yeah, music. <clears throat> All right. Sure. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So sharing um, my love for Jesus through music and everything. It has been, yeah. So what I was saying is I can, I can easily, I can, it's so much easier to sing what's deep down in the heart than to try to put words to it. Mm. And that has been, I have experienced awesome. that many times through writing music. Um, like there's, there's one song I wrote that I wrote it out like one of my darkest moments in life. And I was, I was on my knees. I was weeping and I was trying to pray, but I had no words. Mm. I had no words to pray. And it was just like, out of out of that came a song when i couldn't speak i could sing come on girl. and within like 15 minutes <laughs> the lord gave me a beautiful song that was what was deep down in my heart that i couldn't put into words and that song became just what i declared over my life and what i you know just put as my foundation whether i was going on you know mountaintop and all the glory there or in the valley and um, just doubt and stress and everything. It's like right. the song is called Yahweh and it's just declaring that no matter what, Yahweh is my God. He is what I turn to. He is my strength, my joy, my peace. And that all came out when I didn't have words. The song came when I didn't have words to speak. And mm -hmm. so it's been like a Romans 8 kind of perspective there. The yeah. spirit intercedes with groanings too deep for words. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that's been one way that I've been able to help express my love for the Lord and how he's changed me and my heart through music because sometimes I can't put words to it. Sometimes I me mean, just yeah, it's it's and not even songs can't even fathom. Songs can't even grasp the depth of it all and it's just it's just a beautiful thing though to be able to express the words that you can't always uh in words and express that through music. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I don't have Yahweh, but I do have I'll Carry You queued up. Mm -hmm. And we won't listen to the whole song, but I want people to get a sense of your writing is simple, it's beautiful, it's heartfelt. And I think there's probably gonna be some artists or some songwriters or some folks out there who watch this today and think, I don't have to write the most complicated melodies. I just have to connect with God and connect mm -hmm. with instrument music lyric and just allow that to flow uh mm -hmm. i don't know if it was something that i was reading or something that i was watching of you i just get all of this confused because i've got this, this mountain of lydia plath information going on in my head but it was something to the effect that you were talking about i don't even actually write the songs god gives me the songs and then expressing those to, to the world is kind of what happens as a mm -hmm. result of god giving you the song and i've often said that in my own life is that there are certain songs that I know that I've sat down, we've crafted, maybe co-written some things. I believe that God has given every song and every piece of inspiration that's been out mm -hmm. there. But there are certain songs that I know. I know. I didn't write this song. I, yeah. I didn't. I, I couldn't think like that. I wasn't in that disposition. But the Lord gave me this song, and it's now my responsibility. I need to take that seriously to go ahead and communicate this song and to share mm -hmm. this song as a way of honoring the one who gave me the song. So tell us a little bit about I'll Carry You. Yes, I'll Carry You was written um, about eight months after I wrote the song Yahweh. So this is the song I'll Carry You by Lydia Plath. He's here and uh, we'll get a chance to hear this beautiful song. Well, you probably already know that when you hear that sound, there's music on the way. After all, this is kind of a music show. Sit back and enjoy. All the music can be easily found on your favorite digital distribution channels. Turn up the volume and here we go. Oh 
to ask you really quickly um okay. how how can we be praying for you because i know at certain levels and i don't know how you do this but there's how do you deal with the criticism that's out there i know that's part of you know when, when a bunch of people see you there's some people that will see you and just because they see you they don't like you <laughs> how, how do you deal with that criticism how can we be praying for you that's really two questions that are wrapped in one but mm -hmm. just you know yeah uh, open the window well, to that for us <laughs> yeah well the criticism is real um you know whether it's directed at, at me directly or my family it's the same difference for me you know i don't care sure. if you if you come against me and if you say all these things about me i don't care like my my identity is in christ and not what someone else thinks of me and that's just where i Amen. stand um Amen. and that has you know i've i had to um and just declare that over myself and remind myself that a mm -hmm. lot for the first several years is just like that doesn't matter you know they don't even know the full story anyways what they're saying what they're thinking you know all of that isn't that's not reality because they don't even know the full reality so if and if they knew the full reality they wouldn't be saying that <laughs> anyways so just yeah. reminding myself that first of all um they don't you know they don't even know the full story anyways. Um, they're yeah. saying what they're saying just based off of um, either something they saw a little bit of or completely their own conclusion in the first place. Anyways. Yep, it's that John so, B moment in your life. <laughs> so let's do what people say they don't know about. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, if it's directed at me personally, I just, I don't even care. Like, I just it doesn't faze me one bit. Um, if it's at my like some of my family or my whole family that's different um i care about my family and and all that but i will say i will say there have been a few times that you know someone's left a really really mean dm or um just something like that and just out of here you know it didn't i read it it didn't phase me or anything because like that's not reality. That's not, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't claim that. It's not true. Anyways, but this one time, this was kind of early on. Someone left a really, really nasty DM. And I was like, hmm, I just out of curiosity, I wonder what kind of life this person lives. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to their profile. I went to their mm -hmm. profile and it was, it was a proudly proclaiming Satanist. Okay. So I was just like, you know what? After that, I've just been like, you know what? I don't care what people say. Like, I'm I'm not going to claim any bit of it. I'm going to stand on the truth I know. And, yeah. you know, and, you know, that was, that was the kind of the one, one, that was kind of the turning point for me where I saw the like, oh, yeah, you know, I can't I can't be listening to what people are saying here anyway so yeah and you, and you have anyways. such a godly spirit about yourself and, and such a, a temperate spirit about yourself that you know the world needs the world needs more people like you than it does me <laughs> because I'm, I'm looking to uh 
whenever there's things that are going on and that's part of my sanctification <laughs> and that's why i have mm -hmm. i have people on this show you know like rick rick lee james yourself mm -hmm. other guests that i've had on lydia mm -hmm. athey who are just they're like real christians <laughs> <laughs> they, they have they've gone farther in that area of sanctification than I have because I've been trying to glorify people's heads, not physically, but I just the Lord is always it is a it is the thing that is the that has got me in the most trouble and has got me out of the most trouble. And yeah. it is the, when somebody says something to me, like I can instantly think of something to reply. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. that gets me out of trouble, <laughs> but sometimes that gets me in trouble. And yeah. so you know, doing, doing my research for this, I came across some things where people were talking trash, and I'm like, man, Lydia needs me on her team. <laughs> I can respond to all of these messages and just tell people what for. And uh, I'd be happy because I'd be getting a chance to fight, and uh, it, it would take the pressure off of her. But uh, nonetheless, he's given you that kind of patience and that kind of grace yeah. to be able to deal with things. I have, I have most definitely experienced. Uh, it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit, but just a supernatural uh, level of grace and yeah. patience and all that that just like I could not have gathered that together in my own strength. Like uh -huh. <laughs> it was uh -huh. only Didn't just a testimony of the Holy Spirit in me and empowering me to to fulfill what it is I'm living out in my life right now. And any, you know, what whatever that is in your life, it's. He, he's the only one who can truly um, full strengthen you and equip you to fulfill the calling you have on your life. Amen. So whether Amen. that's something in your small town, whether it's in the public eye, you know, in your own home, it doesn't matter. It is all through the power of the Holy Spirit that you can fully uh, produce the fruit that would be Christ's fruit and not your own efforts. See, 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 she's a real Christian. I brought a real Christian on this show. <laughs> Hey, uh, how can we pray for you? Mm, um, man, that's a good one. I would say I'm really in a, I'm def most definitely in a time of equipping. Um, I can just really feel the um, Holy Spirit equipping me for something. I don't wow. know what, I don't know what that is, you know, like, and it, it's like, I, yes, every day that happens, but it's like the last season. few months, the next few months, it's just in a season of, of like, abiding and equipping um and equipping through abiding because it's it's when you abide in him that his fruit flows through you and it's christ in you and not your own works i don't i don't want a life of striving i want a life of abiding and then the fruit mm. that's produced is his work and not <laughs> not my not my own work so anyways just let I her get, cook um learn how what how to live a lifestyle where my heart posture is abiding continually whether that's you know whether i'm being physically still or not that my heart would still be abiding um in and yes. through everything yes. and it is only through that that i can be um, equipped and empowered to fulfill whatever it is you know whether it's Helping my sisters do the dishes or telling my sisters that I will do the dishes for them. <laughs> you know, like, I want that to be like even the little things, the little, little mundane things of our everyday lives. I want, I want to see the Holy Spirit in the little things just as much in the big things. Because if he only shows Amen. up when, when I'm on camera, if he only shows up when, if I only talk about him when um, the cameras are rolling or when I'm in front of people, then I'm not living the lifestyle that I talk about and I want I don't want to live I don't want to talk about a lifestyle I don't I don't live I want to talk about the lifestyle that I have experienced mm, man so many times so, just... so many times <laughs> the Lord will so... tap me on the shoulder and be like Erskine shut to the up and just let her cook <laughs> and so I know that's not the typical music that you probably get on most shows with the beat and everything in the background but girl you started cooking today <laughs> Man, even in that prayer request. All right, your intercessors that are out there, you people who are praying, let's let's go ahead and pray for this young lady. Let's get her the next thing that she needs to do for today. Oh, let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for Lydia. And we thank you, Lord, for her spirit. Uh, and Lord, her sensitivity to the spirit. And I pray, Lord, that in this season, you would continue to establish in her those foundational things that cannot be shaken. And Lord, that when the, the winds of change, when the season of changes are upon her, 
that she would be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And that, Lord, as you unlock gifts in her life and unlock uh, these new realities in her life, a new closeness, a new genuine uh, walk with you, um, Lord, that that would be something that would become contagious to people around her. TLC has no idea what they have their hands on. Uh, and the people who are making comments online have no idea what's going on. But even through that, Lord, you can work in such a unique way that people are brought to faith in Christ. And those who are in Christ, who love you, are established by being able to see someone who they can relate to, that understands and, and knows and loves you. And so we thank you, Father, for this time of interview. Uh, we even thank you, Lord, for some of the technical glitches that were there that show, Lord, that it's not through our human ingenuity or through our technology that the Spirit of God will save people, but through the Spirit himself. Mm -hmm. So we thank you, Lord, for your life, uh, that you lived, that you died, you rose again and give us life in Christ. And uh, John 10, 10 tells us that's an abundant life. And so we're going to pursue that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have come to the end of this episode. Don't miss a final word from Erskine. Hey guys, tell your friends about this show. And as always, I look forward to your interactions. Please contact us as you are able. We love to hear from you. Okay, friends, let's go and make a difference.